Hello everyone, and welcome to the Matatalab Philippines Facebook page. Thank you for joining us. My name is Aston, and you can call me Kuya E. I'm super excited to share with you today Matatalab's flagship and award-winning product, the Matatalab Pro Set. But before we begin, please don't forget to like Matatalab Philippines on Facebook and share it to your friends. So Matatalab Pro Set is a screenless and words-free hands-on coding robot set. It allows kids aged 4 and above to develop computational thinking abilities and learn coding or programming skills at a very young age. By using coding blocks, which I'll show later, kids use their imagination and create algorithms to control a robot car called Matatabot. And with instant feedback, they will quickly learn that coding is simple and fun. Add to that the abilities to draw and play music. The Matatalab Pro Set will enable kids to be more creative and explorative, all in a game-like experience that they will surely enjoy. This is perfect for preschoolers, homeschoolers, and elementary students to appreciate and get started early on in the STEM curriculum. Now let's start with the unboxing. So we have the user guide, three challenge booklets. Then we have the Matata bot. Our wish will be this little guy's command. It has two LED lights that serve as the eyes, and this is its face. And it has a figurehead component, which is mounted magnetically. And this stone may be opened by using your nails or pushing a coin on this slot, like so. This is a Lego bricks adapter, which means you can replace this with your favorite Lego toy. Let's put it back. Let's mount it again. Then on the back, we have the power button, the USB-C charger port, an indicator light, and the straight moving helper. It is powered with an ion lithium battery. Charging the Matatabot takes two hours, and you could play with it for four to five hours on full charge. This is the control board where we put in place the coding blocks. It is placed from left to right and top to bottom. This is where we put the control tower and this is the start button. Now we have the control tower. It also has a dome that you can easily remove. Also it has a Lego bricks adapter. It has an image recognition camera that captures the coding blocks we place on the control board. An indicator light and at the back we have the power button, the USB-C charger port, and this one is also powered by lithium-ion battery. Charging time for this one is 3 hours, and playtime is 4 to 6 hours on full charge. Next, we have a double-sided map. This is a map of the Forest Park Tour, and this one has places. Now, these are the motion blocks. We have four forward motion blocks, which is indicated by an up arrow. Four backward motion blocks, indicated by a down arrow. And four left turn motion blocks, which will turn the Matatabot to the left. Right turn motion blocks, which will turn the Matatabot to the right. We also have four function blocks, which we will be using later when we go to functions. We also have loop blocks. This symbol indicates the start of the loop, and this one indicates the end of the loop. And we have the fun blocks. This symbol makes the Matatabot dance. This makes the Matatabot play music. And this symbol makes the Matatabot do a random action. And then we have the number blocks, which can be attached to the directional and looping blocks. This space is reserved for the artist and musician add-on blocks, which I will be showing you later on the second part of this video. Lastly, we have the USB-C charger, obstacles, which can be used on the map, and flags, which can be used to mark something on the map. Okay, so now, let's set it up. Let's turn on the Matatabot and the control tower by pressing their power buttons. The 
listen to the sound as they are trying to connect to each other via Bluetooth. Did you hear that? That sound means they are now linked successfully. Now we can start coding. So I have set up this map and placed obstacles here. And I've placed a flag here to indicate that the snowfield area is our goal. So what we want to do is have Matatabot move from the cliff to the snowfield. So our first action would be to have Matatabot move forward. So let's put a forward motion block here on the control board. And the second action would be to turn the Matatabot to its right. Let me go ahead and continue adding the commands. So here is the sequence of command that I want the Matatabot to do. This sequence of commands make up our algorithm. So let's press play and see if I got this right. Oops, the Matatabot made a wrong turn. So what should we do? We will now do some debugging. Debugging is a coding fancy term for finding where our code went wrong and correcting it. So we saw that in the Gobi Desert, the Matatabot turned to its right instead of turning to its left. So let's now correct it from the code. Let's replace the right turn motion block with the left turn motion block. And then let's start over again. So let's press play and see if the Matatabot reaches the snowfield this time. Yay! We got the correct algorithm! Now let's take a look at these two. We can actually shorten our algorithm by using the number blocks, like this. Now let's try it again. Press play. Cool, right? Now, just for fun, let's have Matatabot dance when it reaches the snowfield. Let's try this again. Press play. Now isn't he just adorable? Now let's try the loop function. So here, we want Matatabot to go from the cliff to the waterfall. So let's put in our command. First, we want Matatabot to move forward three times. One, two, three, and turn to its right. We want this action to repeat three times, here, here, and here, in order for Matatabot to reach the waterfall. Since the coding blocks are intentionally limited, we are going to use the loop blocks to overcome that limitation, like this. This symbol signifies the start of the loop. And this symbol signifies the end of the loop. And since we are going to do the series of action three times, one, two, and three, we are going to place three at the start of the loop, which means this will execute the loop three times. Let's see it in action. Yay! 
So that's the loop blocks. Now let's do another challenge. So what we want to do is to have Matatabot travel from the waterfall to here, the grassland. I've placed a flag here to indicate the goal. Now this time, let's use the function blocks. A function contains a series of commands. We declare a function by using this symbol and adding the commands beside it. We typically use the lower portion of the control board to declare the function. Then, we call the function by using this block. When the control tower reads this block, it will execute the command that is declared in the function. Let's continue by adding a turn right motion block. And let's start again. Now let's call the function again. It will again execute this series of commands. Let's try it again. Let's have Matatabot turn to the left, then move forward and call the function again. Let's try it again. Perfect. 